Hello everyone, this is Ultar, and this segment is here to let you know that after about a year of producing content for Offworld Training Company, Mohawk Games contracted me out to do some QA consulting work for them. This video was made during the time that contract was active. Thank you for listening, please enjoy the video. Hello everyone, this is Ultar, and welcome to the third video in our Offworld Training Company tutorial series, Founding. Founding is the first and most important decision you will make in a game of Offworld Trading Company. It will determine which resources you start the game with, how difficult resources will be for you to access, and how much space your corporation will have to expand. The most basic rule of founding is that the more resources you have close to you, the better, but there is a lot more to founding than this. Today we're going to talk about where and why you would found each of the colony types, how to approach the two different founding modes, how to handle the random prices option, and the neutral colony. We're going to start our founding discussion with the Robotic Corporation, the company type I recommend to new players. Robotic Corporations are useful on maps that are a bit light on resources, especially water. A Robotic player only really needs a good source of iron and power, which is always available. With these, he'll be able to reach the late stages of the game, where an off-world can usually carry the player through. Robotic players usually will simply found near a high source of iron and figure things out from there. This allows them to establish strong steel production, and use this steel to purchase whatever else they need in the early game. Scientific corporations, like robotic corporations, want some iron adjacent to them on found. However, scientists generally don't care about the quality of iron. A low is just as good as a high when you're dropping a steel mill on it, as long as there are three to five iron tiles that will secure the steel. But steel won't quite carry a scientist through alone. They have expensive upgrades and a standard number of tiles, so scientists also look to have several tiles of water adjacent to their headquarters. This lets the scientists easily make food, oxygen, and fuel, covering their life support and giving them a strong source of income. A scientific corporation can rely on water away from their base, but this is not recommended, as it allows other players to become aggressive against the scientist with the black market. Scavenger corporations aren't after iron, they don't use steel. Instead, a scavenger wants to be sure he has good access to carbon. It is vital that a scavenger has very strong carbon production, as they need a lot of it to keep up with their steel-based competitors. After ensuring this, a player considering founding as a scavenger needs to ensure the black market is favorable this game. They'll look for strong black market tools like bribe acclaim, EMP, power surges, and mutinies. They also need to ensure that underground nukes are not available as even one nuke landing on a scavenger's carbon patch is often enough to remove them from the game. Finally, we come to the Expansive Corporation. Expansive is what you found when nothing else looks good. Resources are maybe difficult to access, but there are enough of them, in particular water, that robotic doesn't make much sense. The black market maybe looks weak, there isn't enough carbon to play as a scavenger. These kinds of situations are when you drop as an Expansive. Expansive ships move quickly, they have plenty of claims to make up for any strange tiles you'll have to claim based on how awkward the map is. One final note about Expansive is that you can check off-world prices before you decide what to found as, and if the off-world prices are favorable this game, then an Expansive Corporation becomes a more viable option, as their off-world markets are the cheapest in the game. With Corporations covered, let's talk game modes. There are two different ways a game of off-world trading company will start, with a scanning phase or with a map revealed. In single player, most of the time you'll be using the scanning mode. This means you'll explore the map by clicking on it, gradually revealing more resources, as you've seen throughout this video so far. This can be a bit random, as you'll never know exactly what you'll find, but there are helpful icons placed on the map to indicate what sort of resource you can generally expect to be in each area. Usually in this mode, you'll simply want to found on the first acceptable location you find, as you never know if there's anything else left on the map. The other mode uses the reveal map option. This was added to the game after players complained that the scanning mode was too random, and as such, this is the mode you'll usually encounter in multiplayer. When starting the game with the map revealed, each player will also start with a large amount of debt. This debt will fall for each second that the player does not found. Once a player founds, their debt is locked in. If a player waits until there is no debt left, they will start accruing cash instead. This additional cash will stop flowing in once all other players have found it, so there's no point in waiting if everyone else has gotten onto the map. It may sound a bit complicated, but each player is effectively deciding how much they are willing to pay in order to get a location that they like. All players have the same information, but it's up to them to determine what value to place on these locations, and just as importantly, what value their opponents will place on them. This helps balance the game where there are a limited number of strong founding locations, as players will often have to take on a large amount of debt to secure the best spots. Random prices in the neutral colony are up next, and these go hand in hand when founding. 
Random prices is an option that was recently added in Offworld Trading Company, and it simply adjusts the prices at the start of the game. Standard prices are seen here. Random prices means that instead a resource may start at its standard value, half that value, or double it. This will affect your founding because perhaps glass starts the game in $160, and you want to make sure you're near some silicon to take advantage of that. Alternatively, maybe glass is $40, so you lean more toward founding a corporation that uses glass to upgrade, as those upgrades will be cheaper. The options are too numerous to list here, but you'll need to pay attention to these prices and what they mean for the game's ever-changing market as you decide to set up shop. The neutral colony has a very similar effect on founding. The colony will always start with several habitats, which consume life support and driving up life support prices. It will also start with several workplace modules. These can be laboratories, machine shops, offices, or warehouses. Respectively, they will consume chemicals, electronics, power, or glass, again, driving up prices. Check which of these modules the colony has before founding, as it will influence what becomes valuable later in the game. Before we wrap things up, there's one last option we need to discuss, because there are times when you'll be the last to found, and there are no locations left on the map. This is what a power found is for. A power found is very simple. Found and immediately build power buildings. This can only be done by a player that starts with no debt, as income from power goes immediately into paying back a player's debt. Usually, when you use this option, you'll be dropping a robotic corporation on top of silicon or carbon. Robots have no life support that you'd have to pay for with your power income, and they gather up a lot of silicon or carbon when founding on top of them, and this is what you'll need to build your solar panels or wind turbines. This is a bit of an advanced play, as it can be a bit tricky to pull off, but it can work as a last-ditch effort to stay alive on a weak map. That's the basics of founding. There's plenty more left to discover about starting your off-world corporation, but these concepts and ideas will give you a good starting point. Up next, we'll talk about what to do after you've hit the ground in our Adjacency and You tutorial. But until then, thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you next time.